Okay, so another um, session tayo no, ng review of selected accounting topics. And this time, pag-uusapan natin, delinquent, no? delinquent subscription under corporation accounting. Okay? Yeah. So, delinquent subscription. Delinquent subscription class. No? So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng delinquent? Kumbaga, no? delinquent subscription. If the shareholder does not pay on the date fix, no? For payment of the unpaid subscriptions, the shareholder is declared delinquent. And the delinquent share will be sold at public auction. So, okay, stop muna tayo doon, no? Ayan. So, plus itong delinquent subscription is connected ito actually, no, doon sa topic na subscription of shares, no? Subscription of shares, okay? And... To record no yung journal entry for the subscription of shares iba ang ginagawa natin dito to record yung kanyang journal entry we debit the account subscription receivable no ayan and credit subscribe share capital or subscribe ordinary share no ayan so sa subscription of shares merong receivable na account na involved no subscription receivable then alam naman natin kapag sinabing receivable no basta may receivable na nakalagay sa account title so ibig sabihin may utang no yung um, other party sa entity okay ayan so dito ang utang na pinag-uusapan dito is yung payment for the subscribed shares no ayan. payment no yung bayad para dun sa shares of stock na sinubscribe ay dapat makolekta ng corporation. No? And ang subscription ng shares class is supported ito ng tinatawag nating subscription contract. No? Subscription contract. Okay? And ang subscription contract, no? naka-indicate dyan, kumbaga no, yung due date no kumbaga yung due date for the payment of subscription receivable so due date meaning yan dapat no or yan yung due date for the payment ng subscription receivable okay so dapat on or before due date magbayad na no yung nagsubscribe ng shares doon sa corporation ngayon Kapag yung shareholder na yon class ay hindi nakapagbayad no on the date fix for payment so basically hindi nakapagbayad on the due date no ayan yung shares of stock na associated dun sa subscription receivable na yon or yung subscribe share or yung subscribe shares ng shareholder na hindi nakapagbayad no ay ibebenta at public auctions. No? And yung shareholder naman na hindi nakapagbayad on time would be declared delinquent. No? Delinquent siya kasi hindi siya nagmakapagbayad or hindi siya nakapagbayad on time. Okay? Again, yung shares of stock, no? Would be con would be considered delinquent shares kasi nga hindi naman nabayaran. And yung delinquent shares na yon would be sold at public auctions. No? Kung baga, ipapasubasta. No? Yan yung Filipino term eh, for auctions. No? Subasta. No? Subasta. Kung baga, yung delinquent shares of stock. No? So, alam naman natin kapag public auctions class, no? pag subasta, di ba ang nangyayari dito? Kung sino yung may pinakamataas or yung may pinakamataas na offer price, no, siya, sa kanya ibebenta, no, yung um, item na pinapa subasta. So ganun di ba yung nature ng um, auction? No? Kung sino yung may pinakamataas na offer price, 
sa kanya ibebenta yung item. No? Pero dito, plus no sa delinquent subscription na topic, um, iba no, iba yung ating way ng pagdetermine ng highest bidder. So syempre, katulad pa rin no ng mga typical na auctions, the delinquent shares will be sold to the highest bidder. No? Iba typical na ano, typical na of auction. Siyempre, kung sino yung highest bidder, sa kanya, ibibenta. Okay? Ngayon, ang question dito, plus, no, dapat alam natin kung sino yung pinatawag na highest bidder. Who is the highest bidder? Okay? Ayan. I-clear ko lang, ha? Ang dami na kasing nakasulat, eh. Dapat alam natin kung sino yung tinatawag na highest bidder, no? The highest bidder is the person who is willing to pay the offer price, no? The offer price of the delinquent shares for the smallest number of shares, no? For the smallest number of shares. So basically, eto yung ating highest bidder, no? Kung sino yung person na willing magbayad ng offer price in exchange for the smallest number of shares. Ayan. Smallest number. No? Mamaya sa illustrative problem, no? bakit kaya ganyan yung highest bidder? No? Bakit yung smallest number pa of shares would be considered as highest bidder? No? Okay, so meron tayo ditong illustration application ng delinquent subscription. Okay? So, Carl subscribe for 10,000 shares at par 100 pesos, paying 600,000 pesos as initial payment. So, si Carl, no, nag-subscribe for 10,000 shares at par. Tapos, nagbayad muna siya ng 600,000 pesos no, as initial payment. Ngayon, to record class yung journal entry for the subscription of shares, no? kapag dinagyan natin ang journal entry to, ganito yung kanya magiging entry. No? We will debit um, cash, no? We will debit cash 600,000, no? Tapos, credit sub subscription oh sorry subscribe share capital no 10,000 shares times 100 pesos so 10,000 times 100 that is 1 million no 1 million okay so, so supposed to be dapat isang million yung babayaran niya no? pero 600,000 lang yung kanyang binayaran Therefore, yung natirang 400 would be the subscription receivable. No? 400,000. Okay? So, si Carl, class ay may utang pa na 400,000 sa corporation for the subscribe uh, shares. No? Ayan. Tuloy natin, class. No? Due to unpaid subscriptions, Car is declared delinquent, no? So ibig sabihin hindi na bayaran, no? Ni Carl yung four hundred thousand, no? On the due date of payment, no? Kasi di ba ang subscription risk, ang subscri ang pagsubscribe ng shares is supported by subscription contract. And nakalagay sa subscription contract no yung due date ng payment. So kapag lumagpas ka na don, madedeclared ka as delinquent, no? delinquent shareholder. Car is declared delinquent and the delinquent shares will be sold at public auctions. No? Ayan. So yung shares associated dito sa utang ni Carl, yun yung ibebenta sa public auctions. No? The offer price is 450000 including the balance due on the subscription, which is 400, no? and the interest. So, yung difference class no, between the offer price 
and the subscription receivable balance is yun yung interest, no? basically. Ngayon, there are three bidders who are willing to pay the bid price. So, si Maria, namely Maria, Maria is willing to pay the 450,000 pesos for, or sorry, in exchange for 4,500 shares. No? Ayan. Ano ibig sabihin nun, no? So, si Maria class, no, willing siyang magbayad ng 450,000 and in return, yung corporation will give her 4,500 shares. Okay? Yeah. Rose, 5,500 shares. No? And Sheena, 6,000 shares. So based doon sa mga number of shares, alam naman natin, ang highest bidder is basically yung willing magbayad ng offer price for the Smallest number of shares. No? And dahil si Maria, yung may pinakamaliit no, na shares, 4-5 lang, Maria is the highest bidder. Okay? At kaya ganun, no? Sige, i-analyze na lang natin. Plus, no? So, the offer price is 450,000. Si Maria ay willing magbayad ng 450 in in return for the 4500 shares. So, kapag inanalyze natin to, no, 450,000 divided by 4500. Ibig sabihin si Maria ay willing magbayad ng 100 peso per share. No? Kasi 4000 450,000 divided by 4500. Maria is willing to opt to pay the offer price at 100 peso per share of stock. Si Rose naman, 450,000 divided by 5,5. So, round na lang natin, no? 81.82. Paano lang yung 81.82, no? Pinag-divide lang natin yung 450 divided by 5,500. Ayan. So, si Maria, willing siyang magbayad ng 81.82 pesos per share. No? And si Sheena, 450 divided by 6,000, 75 pesos. No? Sheena is willing to pay 75 pesos per share. Siyempre, kung sino yung pinakamataas, sino yung pipiliin natin. Kaya ito, siyempre, 100. No? Okay? So, ganyan yung analysis class no, kung bakit uh, yung smallest share lagi yung highest bidder. No? Dahil siya yung may pinakamataas na kumbaga offer price no, for, or sorry, offer price per share. No? 100 pesos per share. Okay? Yeah. So, I hope clear. No? I hope malinaw. So, buburahin ko na no, yung, ay hindi, wag muna pala. Hindi pa naman ganun kadami. No? yung sulat. So, alam na natin na si Maria ang highest bidder. So, assuming na yun nga noon, nagkaroon na ng settlement between the corporation and Maria, the highest bidder. So, ganito yung magiging journal entry ng corporation. No? So, debit cash for the uh, receipt no of the offer price galing kay Maria. Ito ay galing kay Maria no. From Maria. Okay, so credit the subscription receivable, yung utang ni Carl, no? kasi nabayaran na through public auction. No? Ayan, 400 and yung difference is the interest income. 50. Okay. And to record yung issuance no, of share capital, so this is your account subscribe share capital no ayan yung 1 million dahil uh, fully paid na no yung subscription receivable through public auction um issue na no yung uh, shares of stock no so 
debit, subscribe share capital, 1 million. Credit, ordinary share capital, 1 million pesos. Okay? So, paano yung breakdown, class no, ng shares? Paano yung magiging breakdown ng 10,000 shares? No, kasi dalawa yung involve eh. Si Carl, na originally nag-subscribe for the 10,000, pero naging delinquent. No? Tapos pumasok si Maria as highest bidder. So, paghahatian ni Carl at ni Maria yung 10,000 shares. No? Ayan. Thus, all 10,000 shares shall be deemed fully paid. No? Accordingly, Maria gets 4,500 shares, yung kanyang offer. No? And Carl, the original subscriber, will get the 5,500 shares. Okay? So I hope um, clear, no? I hope clear yung ating topic na delinquent subscription class, no? Ayan. So hanggang doon lang naman yung ating pag-uusapan, no? Yung journal entries for the um, delinquent subscription of shares, no? So thank you for watching, no? So kung umabot ka sa portion na to, no? Maraming salamat sa panonood. Tapos kung nagugustuhan mo naman yung ating mga lectures dito sa YouTube channel, no? I hope mag-subscribe ka para inspired naman ako no na gumawa ng mga free accounting lectures dito sa YouTube.